she had on Dylan Mulvaney, who's been, quote, a girl for a year and has been documenting Dylan's, quote, 365 days of girlhood, which Dylan isn't having because Dylan's not a girl and never had a girlhood. Dylan is a grown biological man who's now declared that Dylan is trans. Um, Dylan has had the facial, the feminization surgery and been very public with this transition, very popular on social media. So it goes on the Drew Barrymore show. And I would submit to the audience that what is most bizarre here, Dylan is the normal one. Dylan is not behaving to me in any particularly odd way. Drew Barrymore is. And to the listening audience, please go to YouTube later and Click on this point. We are, what, one one twelve, an hour 12 into the show. So you can slide forward and take a look at this video for yourself. Here it is. Honored and thrilled to meet you. I really am. This is, um, it's very personal for me in a world where we're all trying to figure out who we're supposed to be. The risk. Yes. The- Bravery. Oh. I do think that there was so much that came up this year that I had no idea that I was going to have to figure out in womanhood. Yes. So much of my audience is a younger demographic, and I sort of would love to show transness in a way that we haven't seen it before. Where do you find the strength to keep being the joy? Well, I think having my chosen family oh my and the people that I love to take care of me. It's interesting because I look at someone like you. And I can't imagine anybody disliking you. Oh, please. Do you know, do you want to know, ironically, who uh, dislikes me the most sometimes? Who? Myself. Oh, me too. Oh. Oh, And, but, I guess, you know, you've asked me now, like, uh, you've asked me, like, what I would do to combat the hate, right? Yeah. But what do you do? Okay, that's a great question. Now, I started- You've been doing it a little longer than I have. Another thing that you're making me realize is to not carry on in spite of others. I'm sorry, I just realized that I'm sitting on the floor with Drew. I'm <laughs> so happy crazy. to be doing this. Thank you for oh. joining me on the floor. The floor always feels safer. It feels nice. Oh my God, there's so much to go over. <laughs> to keep being- the joy. That was the cringiest part of all. Oh my God, I can't. And for the listening audience, the, the, what made the clip controversial is Drew Barrymore got down on her knees and seemed to be praying at the transgender altar of Dylan Mulvaney, which as an image, I'll start with you again on this, Maddie, encapsulates a lot of what is driving actual biological women nuts about this whole evolution which is trans women are coming into our locker rooms and our sports and our bathrooms and our colleges and so on and taking over, taking over. And we as women are expected to take the knee and just be thankful and say, you know, we we appreciate what you're doing to us. And anything else means you're a bigot. Yeah. What I see when I look at that clip is I see a man dressed like a Barbie doll and a woman bowing before this man dressed as a Barbie doll. So there was a there was a time in, in feminism where where people said, oh, like we need to get away from these stereotypes. It's, you know, it's much more to, to being a woman than being a Barbie doll. Well, you know, I can get on board with that. That's that sounds reasonable to me. But now it's not just the Barbie doll thing. It's like a man underneath the Barbie doll costume. And this is what, this is the pinnacle of of being an authentic female and, and we're supposed to get on our knees. I mean, you know, it, it it's just infuriating. It's just so obviously sexist. And and and, and it's ridiculous as well that that Drew Barrymore um thinks that this is what the, the cultural moment calls for. If you think of all the issues women face today around the world, I mean women in the West are doing pretty well. Uh, I mean, they, they might be coming for our, our bathrooms and our sports, but all things considered, we're doing pretty well. Uh, but there are women around the world who are not. They are suffering. They, they're not allowed to uh, go out the house without male males in their families accompanying them. They're not allowed to expose their hair. They're not allowed to vote. They're not allowed to go to school. There's serious stuff happening out there. And, and a real women's rights movement, a real feminism would be talking about that. They would not be kneeling before a male in a Barbie costume. It's ridiculous. It, Charles, 
there's so many things that infuriate me about this clip. So I imitated the, how do you find the courage to keep being the joy with her? It was so cringy, her (laughs) fake smile, her fake joy. Like this is an actress. Drew Barrymore is acting. And what is she acting the part of? Woke, weak, white woman praying at the transgender altar. That's what she, that's her part in this particular role. And then to go on to say, you know, I, um, the, the, Dylan says, I can't imagine anyone disliking you. And Drew, do you no. know who sometimes dislikes me the most? Myself, as they're both kneeling on the ground. <laughs> and then the floor feels safer. Maybe I should do the next presidential debate from the floor. Perhaps I should have been sitting on the floor when I asked Trump or any of these other guys tough questions. How weak is she? To me, it goes back to what we were saying before. Where are the strong women? Where are the, forget, like Maddie said, okay, give me a Nancy Pelosi any day over this pathetic display of, I don't know, what is it? False strength by showing every weakness coming out of your pores. And it may all be an affectation, which makes it even more insulting. Yeah, when I was born, the prime minister was Margaret Thatcher and the queen was Elizabeth II. And I assumed, as any child does, that women were in charge of everything because <laughs> my mother was at home <laughs> as well. So you, it's quite the transition from uh, that assumption to watching that clip. I mean, I think Maddie raises a really interesting point, which is that, you know, that is a man in a dress, but yep. it's a man in a dress who is trying to emulate the most stereotypical conception of a woman imaginable. If you watch Tom and Jerry and they want to introduce a love interest for Tom, that's what the woman looks like with the red lipstick and the dress. And this is a repeated theme. We, we saw this um, right from the beginning uh, with, with Bruce Jenner who became Caitlyn Jenner and had that photograph on the front of, I forget which magazine it was, that really came out of the 1950s. So it's it's a it's a weird reinforcement of stereotypes that many feminists spent a long time, with good reason, I think, trying to get rid of. Um, what bothers me more about it overall, though, is the extreme therapy culture that that reflects. Now, yeah. I'm not against therapy. Yes. I think some people really do need therapy. There's lots of great work that therapists do. But the idea that in all circumstances you should love yourself and uh, follow your dreams and do whatever you want to do is crazy. I mean, there are circumstances in which you should be encouraged to be yourself, but you don't want to encourage Charles Manson to be himself. And you don't want to encourage somebody who is being deeply self-destructive to be himself and love himself. And you don't want to encourage somebody who needs to make profound changes to his lifestyle because he's hurting other people or damaging his own interests to be himself. Uh, what, what we just saw was this, um, this claim, in effect, that whatever it is that somebody says that they are, that will not only be good for them, but it should be celebrated in the most saccharine possible way by other people. And I just don't think that is true. Maybe you've heard me talk about Bonner Private Wine Partnership. They have these great, incredibly rare Malbecs that you have got to try. If you enjoy a glass of wine, try these wines from the extreme altitudes of Argentina. The flavor is unlike any other. Blackberry, leather, smoke, little dark cherry in there. And these wines are nearly impossible to get on your own. The producers deep in the Andes Mountains make limited quantities. The best part, they have cut out the middleman so you will not deal with a big markup. Today we have a great offer for you. If you visit Bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS, you will not only get the wine for over 50% off plus free shipping, you'll also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It is a deal that's hard to turn down if you are a wine lover like yours truly. Just visit Bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.